The Australian yeah. accent. <laughs> One of my favorite accents in English. Really? Why is that? Why is that? Uh, I don't know. I think it's because it's, uh, it's, it sounds elegant to me. And, uh, yeah. and then I also like the, uh, you know, standard, um, no, how do you call it? Received, pronunci uh, received uh, pronunciation, the standard British accent, you know what I mean? Ah, uh, yes, yes. But anyway, yeah. by the way, we are live now. <laughs> so <laughs> the first thing everyone's getting is the accents. But okay. hello, guys, those of you watching, those of you still sleeping, you'll be able to watch this later. It is another episode of Learn Like X Polyglot. And I have my wonderful <laughs> Gabriel De Silva here. So, Gabriel, we actually we met on Instagram, but yeah. tell us who are you and how can you give us some of your wonderful polyglot knowledge? Well, thank you. Um, Sveiki, Lina. Oh, I, uh, Sveiki, Sveiki. <laughs> I just decided to learn some. Uh, Latvian uh, 10 minutes ago and uh, wonderful, wonderful. So they thought, hey, you know. well my name is Gabriel I um, I'm originally from, from Brazil and uh, I was I was born and raised uh, over there and uh, I, it took me a long time to learn English and to actually get to the point where in which I was in which I you know got really comfortable with it uh, so I always thought that I was mm -hmm. really bad at learning languages because it took me so long you know it took me like a decade to learn english and uh, then i moved to canada and i went sorry when did you start with english so where are you getting I was, to i was 10 years old i was ah, 10 years old. okay i was a, li a little boy in brazil and uh and they put me my mom you know and my dad they put me in a in a school and after six years, basically the program was done and I was supposed to be essentially fluent in English. However, mm -hmm. then I moved to Canada when I was 17. And uh, although, you know, my, my level in English was, was like, was pretty decent and it was pretty good. And my grammar was good and, and I, could, I could write and I could read. Uh, communicating was, a, was very uh, challenging. And uh, I had, you know, I, started going out with a girl here from Canada and uh, you know sometimes interacting with her family uh, at dinner or at breakfast was challenging like it couldn't you know many times like often it would just miss things and uh, you know I made good friends here and like I had a really patient best friend who uh, he his other best friend was was deaf essentially mm -hmm. so he, he was very careful enunciating things and he was really really uh patient essentially to so he, he basically you know he, we would just like go on drives and he would just like teach me things and like when i wouldn't understand something he would repeat it and he would explain it and uh so yeah i always thought uh i was always good at math and i thought you know i'm good at math and i'm bad at languages but uh, then i started learning i thought you know you know what like i need to learn other languages i want to learn other languages and uh then i started uh i went to paris with my father in 2007 and i and i thought for whatever reason i was delusional and i thought that i spoke uh decent french but my french was terrible it was very basic because i had done a couple of courses in university and oh god i struggled i struggled in, in paris so so by the sound Sorry? of it, your language learning journey has been really like hilly, we would say, you know, up and down and not just, you know, as you would normally hear, oh, I learned this language, I learned that language, which is actually kind of great to see. I think you have that, you know, and they think, oh my God, even struggling, like even learning one, when they have to learn it, they feel like it's, it's just this uphill battle, this constant uphill battle. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Like uh, for me, I mean, especially initially, because it eventually got easier, but only much later. Like uh, it took so simultaneously, I started learning French and German, and then I, I, it took me four years to become fluent in both of them uh, at the same time. But that that was a, a mm -hmm. significant improvement from taking ten years to learn a language, which was English. Well, in reality, about eight or nine, 
And uh, so the time was halved mm -hmm. and it two, went two languages at once. And then Spanish, I always, you know, it's sort of, I was always lazy with it because speaking Portuguese, it's relatively close. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I thought, you know, so I started learning it as well and I picked it up relatively quickly. And then, you know, suddenly in my mid twenties, I was like, oh, wow, now I speak five languages fluently. And then I thought, well, now I just want to learn more. And I, then I, why, why then I stopped at five, why I stopped at five. Oh, so the five, the five were English, Portuguese, Spanish, uh, French, and German. Mm -hmm. My first five. And then, um, then I got excited because, you know, I thought, well, like if I, if I learn these, perhaps I can learn, uh, other ones. Then I, then I learned Italian and Dutch at the same time. And that took me only a year. And then it, because, relatively because of course that, you know, like it's a relative thing too. Since like if I if I'm in Amsterdam for for a couple of weeks, I'm just able to communicate quite well in Dutch. Of course, now because I I don't speak a lot of Dutch quite frequently, it's probably getting kind of terrible. But if I go back to it quickly, like I, I, when I was in Paris, I had a I came across like a lot of Dutch people, so I got to practice a little bit, which was fun. So and often they're kind of pleasantly surprised, I guess, because like they're they don't often come across people who speak Dutch and they're, and they tell, you know, often they tell me, Oh my God, your, your Dutch is great. But they, they were just being nice in reality because <laughs> I just need to practice. Never know, you never know. And, mm -hmm. and, that's, and then I, I learned uh, Russian, which I, I love. I absolutely love because I, I, uh, I love Russian literature and I have, for example, like a lot of uh, bilingual books, for mm -hmm. example, like there's a uh, Gogol's, uh, yeah. Knows. And I love this book. And uh, it's, in, for example, it's in French and Russian. And because my vocabulary in French is a lot, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm a lot more fluent in French than in Russian. Like often, like I'll, I'll read, if I miss things in Russian, then I'll just read them in French and I'll learn. And uh, yeah, but I love like Dostoevsky. I love, I love Tolstoy. Um, and I love Pushkin. Uh, the poet is my favorite poet. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that uh, it's such a shame that like if someone doesn't uh, can't understand Russian, they can't fully appreciate the magic of uh, of Pushkin's poetry. And uh, mm, I think exactly, exactly. It's with any language. I think there is so much behind literature, and that's in its own such a good reason to learn a language. If you love a certain you know, or maybe author, artist, anything, that when you read those things in that language, you kind of, you, you especially if you've had contact with the culture, you just understand it better because, you are, you know, there are references to things, as I'm sure you'll find, that you wouldn't be able to just literally translate. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's, it's, and it's beautiful, you know, and I think that you have gained access to a world, to a world, uh, to which you didn't have access before at all, and, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's just like. And for example, I uh, then I start. I became serious about learning Chinese about two and a half years ago or so, and learning Chinese has enabled me to to learn so many wonderful things about Chinese culture. And uh, mm -hmm. and although I, I don't, uh, I've focused on uh, conversational essentially, and uh, but I. I can recognize between, I don't know, maybe a, a thousand and two thousand characters. So it's getting there, but mm -hmm. I can't, uh, I can't read, uh, like great literature in Chinese yet. That's going to take me a, a little while longer. And although I'm getting essentially close to, if not conversational fluent, conversationally fluent already in Chinese, um, yeah, it's going to take me a little while longer to actually fully be able to appreciate the, the, the depth of, of Chinese literature as well, mm. which I look but forward it's, to. It's a good challenge, I think. You've set yourself up for a good challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so the question we got on the chat, how many languages do you speak in total? So it, it depends on how we, we want to say, you know, how we define speak, right? Yeah. So like I would say, um, fluent or close to fluency, or languages that I'm able to understand quite well would be about 11. Mm -hmm. And I've dabbled in a lot more. 
So I've dabbled in maybe in total, like, you know, if I, I can have like a, uh, I can say things in like a lot of languages, but uh, mm -hmm. of course, like, of course, like I, can, I know some basic Czech, Slovak, uh, Polish, uh, Croatian, you know, uh, basically Turkish, Japanese, it's like a lot of languages. But of yeah. course, like I'm only really like a bit more, uh, let's say conversationally fluent and able to understand 80 to 90 percent plus of about 11 languages. Amazing. That is amazing. So, and how old are you again? I'm, I'm in my early 30s. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> well, know if I can disclose my age, you know. But <laughs> I, I find normally, I, I, uh, something that I do quite often is that, like, I absolutely love uh, to just go out and meet people, you know, yeah. and I, that's why I love a city like Paris or Berlin or London. I just absolutely love chatting with strangers and I just like go and, and I often make videos of that, you know, like me just mm. like chatting in, in these in, in languages. And, uh, and I think that that's something that is just like so fun about doing this. Right. And, and sometimes people are asking like, Oh, so how old are you, you speak all these languages? And I'm like, I'm 246. I'm a vampire. <laughs> it's like, it's, um, I think, uh, uh, yeah, but that, that touches on like how, how fun it is, right. To just sort of mm. be able to communicate with people like in all, um, these different languages. And, uh, when I was in Paris here, some, like there were, there were many fun things that happened on this trip, but one of the things that I found most interesting was, uh, when I was in the, when I was in the Metro, and there were there were three Chinese people, and the the metro was relatively quiet. People were like chatting that much. It was like night, so people were kind of tired. And then they just engaged in a conversation with with the Chinese people in Chinese. And they just got like, and everybody in the train just started looking at us and looking at me, and think probably thinking like, oh, like oh, what the hell? This guy speaks Chinese. <laughs> which is those are which the is best cool. moments. Those are the best moments. Yeah, and seeing and seeing those reactions, right? And like this one girl that was like, right, uh, right beside me, she just like congratulated me. It was like, oh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and, they, and they were uh, and the Chinese people, they were like so so nice and sweet and like uh, almost kind of like excited that you know like that I that I that I spoke Chinese, but given that I haven't been there, um, but of course, like I want I want to go to China relatively soon. Mm -hmm. Here in Vancouver, we have like a large uh, Chinese community. And uh, a lot of them speak Cantonese, which I don't speak at all. Mm -hmm. I know like, five words perhaps, but uh, there is a growing uh, community that speaks Mandarin Chinese as well. And then, so it's kind of fun to just like practice relatively often. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, that's the great thing about living in bigger cities or actually just the world today is you can have so many opportunities to practice your language everywhere and anywhere. Like I just got back from Australia and like on this small island, Rodness Island, I practiced, I was able to practice my Italian and French in one day because the waitress that worked there was from France and then the uh, desk was Italian and it just, it just happens like that. And I think this is something like everyone who loves languages or even learns languages finds it or has in common that it's just you have such a greater way to connect to people. And yeah. I think that's Absolutely. essentially what it's. So no, we have no. a couple of questions as well, okay. unless you wanted to say something. No, of course. Point. I'll, I'll add on later because I, I loved what you said. It's just that I find that there's also, however, I've come across a lot of shyer polyglots and shyer language learners and i always say mm -hmm. that's fine if you're shy and you're and you know for, for example like i know uh i'm friends with steve kaufman mm -hmm. and I, I i just I, he's great you know I, I love the guy and he he his philosophy is that you know he prefers to take a while longer to start speaking right i'm i'm not that way like i i like to speak try to speak right away when i when i start learning language Mm. Um, that's interesting because I think that's the that's the exact opposite philosophy that Benny Lewis has, for example. You know, he says, start speaking literally from day one. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I, I, on this, on this, uh, I, I personally think it's a personal choice, right? Like, I, uh, yeah. I don't think that either of them is right or wrong. Exactly. You know, exactly. Some people, they, they'll feel, you know, like I'm not comfortable yet. I'm afraid of making mistakes and like whatever. So they can, they can take a bit, you know, they, they can take a little longer and that's fine. Um, I'm in that regard, I'm more like Benny, like I prefer to just like, boom, just start mm -hmm. saying stuff right away. You know, like I legit like just made some notes in Latvian <laughs> right here to just like try to say Well, them. No, that's, that's exactly, yeah. Labrid. I think, <laughs> Labrid, Katavit. Katavit, Paldies <laughs> Slabi. Uh, is that yeah, right? Yeah, love it, love it, Paldies. You put the thank you after. Oh. <laughs> but um, I was about to say, very good. You are love it. Very good. So we've got a question. How would you study if you were to study at university on basis of the new target language in two years' time? Um, so I don't know if I got the question. So if I if I were to learn a language in university for two years, how would I go about it? Is that the question? I think that's what the question. It's fun. <clears throat> well, it's formulated a little bit funny, but. Yeah, how would you study if you were to study at university? I would maybe it's just two years time. How would you go about it? So I think it depends on your goal, right? Because for example, if this person's goal is to just like master a language as much as possible within those two years and get a degree or something, right? Or do quite well academically in a language. That is a different goal than I normally have, which is to get conversational as soon as possible. Because I really like to, to get conversational. And, I, and of course, like normally I, I kind of fall in love with the literature in a language. Then I just, in, a, in one way, I kind of get academic as well, just because I, I like literature and I, and I, and I start trying to read it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that uh, it really depends. It, so if the person's goal is to just get, you know, uh, really academic and, and, and be able to, to read texts and, and write well in the language, they're going to need a lot of exposure. They're going to need to do a lot of reading. Uh, preferably, in my opinion, I would go, I would focus on things that I really like, because I think that, you know, if you're just reading texts that you're not really into, that's just going to push you away from the language almost. You're not going to have that much fun, right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. So like what I, what I try to like, I, I love to, you know, like the, Things I, I showed you, for example, like I got also this book like Cervantes mm -hmm. in Espanol, and uh, it's just in, in Spanish and French, two languages that I'm quite, uh, you know, that I'm strong with. But nonetheless, I wanted to, to read some, you know, classic Spanish literature. And uh, I haven't touched that much of it, but it's just something that I really enjoy. And I think that that can, you know, if someone embraces that, and uses the things they want to learn or, or want to read that they that really attract them, then they can like really progress that way. And I think that that's so important, right? And so, um, sorry. So the question, I think, okay, they meant they want to study like psychology in Finland on basis of Finnish. So they want to study. I suppose what I'm getting is the in that language at university. So perhaps it's a new language. Yeah. I, uh, I, I know nothing about Finnish. I just know that it's considered a, a difficult language. Mm -hmm. Someday I would love to learn it, of course. Um, now, if it is a brand new language for them, of course, that that's, there are going to be challenges on, on the way. Um, I would say to get, of course, to get started, right? Like, I, I think that one thing that, uh, that Steve Kaufman says that I really agree with is that it's great if you can, even when you're starting, try to push yourself already and like, you know, not really stay with the basic stuff for too long because it's just a waste of time. Okay. You know? And for example, like many basic language textbooks are so useless. They're just like, oh, let's, let's <laughs> learn about what a conversation in the hotel or a conversational in the, a conversation exactly, in the airport. Exactly, exactly. You know? Like what think, you yeah. conversation work, you know? You don't so, need that, and that's the thing, you don't need that conversation. Yeah. I think the, the clearest point and the biggest piece of advice, I think two yeah, key pieces of advice that everyone should always have 
is a always remember what is your own personal goal you know if you for example if you want to travel somewhere you're going to need that vocabulary but you're not going to need to know you know the i don't know subjunctive case or whatever in the language just yet that's probably the first point and the second point is whilst having that goal to just yeah to keep that somewhere but always related back with relevant information and relevant resources that you find interesting so i think you need a balance of you know the stuff that okay if, let's say you want to learn the language to a near native level then you're gonna have to learn some grammar you're gonna have to go pretty much the whole way but it can yeah. also be fun and especially if that's your goal i think you know we're motivated by it by that, that in itself i think that that's really well put because uh, you know you uh yeah of course that you need to to get exposure from like the grammar and like perhaps it, in many in for many languages i actually did a ton of language uh, of grammar exercises for mm -hmm. for french for german I have these these books and I just like went through them and I did all these exercises and a lot of people hate that and uh, and in a way it's understandable because <laughs> it's not you know uh, yeah. it's not that much fun and uh, you know but some some high level polyglots they minimize exposure to that and or even like completely you know just they just even avoid it and focus on just exposure to to text and just exposure to language, exposure to audio. Uh, something that uh, that I personally use a lot is just audio and text to just get like mm -hmm. a lot of exposure. And like whenever I don't understand something, when I hear it, then I can like read it. Um, and I think that uh, you're absolutely right. You have to find like a bit of that balance, right? Like, yeah, sure, focus on the grammar, but also uh, seek continu continuously seek things that you enjoy, right? And like, and you can mm -hmm. learn exactly. that way build a basis on the, uh, in the language that way. Yeah. So they said also, how would you go about learning a language where there are spoken and written forms, which is, I think, a really good question, especially, you know, seeing as you've learned or are learning Chinese with Russian as well, same thing. And how would you go about that if you have textbooks that are, of course, going to be in written form? OK, so basically, uh, Russian and Chinese were, were in, a, in a way different because initially I also, for Russian, I started with Pimsleur. I started with an audio program. Mm -hmm. So there was no, uh, essentially like, I, I was kind of scared of Cyrillic at first. I was like, oh, wow, this looks so difficult. Oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, so I decided to avoid it initially. And, uh, and then I, I finished Pimsleur. I think it was three uh, levels or whatever, and I finished all of them. Mm -hmm. And I was already getting some confidence, like conversationally, because my ex-girlfriend's uh, family speaks Russian as well, so I was practicing a bit with them. And then one day, I just decided to sit down and learn the alphabet, and it was a lot easier than I imagined. I actually thought, "Oh wow!" Like, it you know, is. It is. <laughs> and, uh, the funny thing is, actually, yeah, no, just on just on the alphabet. Um, picky piece of information. I actually learned the alphabet to so the Russian alphabet when I was eight years old. I taught it myself because I decided everyone, like my whole, whole family speaks Russian except me. I'm going to learn this alphabet. And then like, I think 11 years later, I actually continued learning the language. So I could read the whole time, mm -hmm. but I never just yeah went about it. So I think that's interesting that you did kind of the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, because in, in a way though, I was thinking that Perhaps that's the natural way because I mean we we learn to speak before we learn to to read and write, exactly. and uh, so you know. But initially, I must say though that although I already knew the the, the the alphabet, it took me a long time to pick up speed. You know, so initially I'd be going like, "I'd be reading, Zapiski Sumashev." It would be really slow. And uh, so it took me a while to just, yeah. but this was practice, right? And exposure that you just pick up speed. Uh, and uh, with Chinese, I decided initially to just, just focus on pinyin. Mm -hmm. So just focus on, you know, conversational and pinyin and uh, almost ignoring the, the, the characters at first. And then, then I started, then I started like learning the characters. I haven't uh, really, focused on calligraphy. I've only really focused on 
uh, reading as well as basically, you know, because of pinning, I can actually type up stuff on the computer or, uh, or on uh, my phone in Chinese. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, but I think that like, it's something that shouldn't hold you back if you, I mean, there's so many amazing languages that like, you know, it sh you shouldn't get intimidated. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Alphabet, just it's dive almost like, yeah, it's almost like you have a language is like a puzzle and it has so many pieces and you kind of, you know, you put this puzzle piece in, then you need the next puzzle piece, then you'll see the first one again. And because you have two now, you have the third one fit in, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like, it's almost like, yeah, you've, you're covering all of these different aspects, like reading, writing, speaking, and you've exactly it comes down to that balance again. So yeah, kind of trying to find what do I need to focus on? What's my weak spot? train that a little bit and then it sort of comes together into this one whole picture. Yeah, that, that, that's a good, uh, that's a good analogy. Uh, I think, uh, you know, in, if you, if you develop and I just find that so many people are just like, oh, you know what? Um, oh, I, I would never want to learn Russian. Don't, those letters look crazy. They're just it must be <laughs> so difficult. That's so sad. I that's know. such a sad it's excuse. So sad. And especially for example, like also, uh, Chinese and the difficulty, like the initial difficulty, the, the initial hurdle of like going through, the, oh my God, I need to learn 3,000 characters at least to understand things. Like that's a lot. And they're, they mm -hmm. seem so incredibly complex. But, uh, but the real thing is just like, I mean, you can just fo initially focus on conversational for any language, right? Like for, that's personally like, a, like the goal that I mm -hmm. normally seek. If someone, you know, wants to, uh, take academic courses and develop, of course, they're going to take a slightly different route and probably start focusing on that initially. Uh, but I think that uh, yeah, first you, you can't uh, really get intimidated. And um, yeah, so I think that that's, that's a good way to find that balance, right? Like to just really... Yeah, exactly. Improve. Have you learned to have, edit? Sorry, this is a Have you, sorry, sorry, have you yeah, tried to... No, I was going to say... <laughs> Continue, continue. Okay. Have you have you uh, have you tried learning any Arabic? I did actually. Yes, I did. And the writing completely threw me off. Um, I used to work with people from Lebanon, and uh, my boss started to teach me like how to write my name and how to write everything. And I was like, "Whoa, this is completely different." <laughs> no, definitely. And I I find that, you know it's it's the writing is beautiful, mm. and. Uh, but what I find fascinating about Arabic that that's a, a quite particular case, unlike Chinese and Russian, that you know you basically you have uh, what you, the things that you're gonna be able to read is what's gonna be spoken. Arabic has the modern standard and all the dialects that are complete that are basically different, right? So um, essentially, I think that for myself, it, it start. I thought, oh, I'm gonna start with modern uh, standard and try to read and write. And then I quickly learned, you know, like I was, I, I met uh, Arabic speakers and they were like, well, you know what, like you should just pick a dialect. You have to pick a dialect because you're not going to be able to just mm -hmm. really have that, you know, a conversation in modern standard that's going to sound just odd <laughs> if you're a, a pair, like from what, from what I understand. But I think that's so interesting and just so strange, like that you have so many speakers of this language, but in one language that's, that's so, true. exactly you know, and so, comparatively like you know it's almost like uh to my under, to my limited understanding of arabic because it is limited that modern standard corresponds more or less to latin and the the dialects mm -hmm. correspond correspond to italian and french and and spanish and so on and uh, so i i started focusing initially on the egyptian dialect and then I learned a little bit of the of the Levantine Syrian dialect uh, as well. Mm. So I, I just know a little bit of conversational of uh, the two of them. And then uh, just to confuse myself as much as possible, I started learning Saudi as well. And then now there's just like a salad uh, of Arabic in my head. <laughs> but in the future, I want to kind of focus on one of them. And yeah, then yeah. Down to the reading and writing. So last question. Um, what, why did you stop doing videos about Swedish or what happened to your Swedish? 
with Swedish, sorry? Yeah, someone said, they also what? messaged me on Instagram and they said, why yeah. did you stop about uh, videos about Swedish? For updates or something about Swedish? Oh, so I, I did, a, I did uh, because that was a challenge that I did, a one week challenge. And then at the end, I completed the challenge and I did that little video. Uh, I haven't like I, I'm all, I'm going to continue to learn Swedish, but that was um, that was the end of the challenge. But <laughs> but that, there will be for sure like more things about Swedish in the in the future. However, in the uh, in Wonderful. this channel, <laughs> channels, I have a Brazilian channel which is bigger, uh, mm. which is English with Gabriel, and I basically teach English uh, to Brazilian yeah. people. And we have some Brazilians actually saying hello. So we have Felipe and who else? Someone so else is here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Portuguese. Honestly, like Brazil is my next destination that I want to go to. I actually That's have so it. many people that, um, yeah, or a lot of my YouTube family is <laughs> Brazilian, which is cool, yes. which is very cool. So, yeah. Excellent. I mean, it's a gorgeous country. You you gotta go. And I I, I recently went. In yeah, March, definitely. And it was a uh, it was a lot of fun. It was so hot down there though, and I'm not used to it being like. Now I'm kind of, I'm I'm used to this to the Canadian weather, you know. To the I'm used to the rain of Vancouver. Although today it was sunny, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> you should so, go to Australia. It's <laughs> warm all the time. Nice, nice. Down under, um, no, absolutely. And I think um, so. Yeah, like, but now in this, in the other, in my second, my second uh, YouTube channel, the the one with the uh, used to be Fluente Sap, but I just changed it to Gabriel Silva. I'm also going to do a bit more uh, travel vlogging as well, because I made a lot of videos about like when I was in Paris and when I was in Munich. I actually didn't go to Berlin. I ended up going to Munich, and uh, I loved it. And I went to a, a Frühlingsfest. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's not fun about. It was awesome. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. But anyways, so I think we'll finish off there. If Do you have any last final tips or anything that you would say? If there was one piece of advice you would give anyone, maybe even for English, maybe whatever language, what would it be? Okay, I think I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna conclude what we we mentioned before already. Like I'd say, uh, try to build a base, you know, a base, or, or like try to really establish yourself in the language using content that really excites you, content that you really enjoy. Um, otherwise, your motivation is gonna tank, and you're gonna eventually probably put things aside and be like, oh, you know, I'm not enjoying this. And that applies to material as well, because sometimes like you can buy a program. Let's say that you buy Ro Rosetta Stone or whatever, and you don't like it. That sucks, you know, and that and then you're uh, but let's say that you do like it, that you do enjoy it, then go for it. Right. So like find resources and find uh, different things that you truly enjoy in, in the language that you're learning. That's mm -hmm. that's, I think, the most important. <laughs> That's a great tip. That's a great tip. And so how would you finish off one of your normal videos in Portuguese? Can you give us a little bit of an outro? Oh, yeah. I would love to hear it. Normally, I, I always go like, uh, um, let's say, Hey, galera, espero que tenham gostado do, do vídeo. Uh, se inscrevam no canal e valeu. <laughs> That's how I end. Valeu means like, uh, like kind of thank you in an in Valeu, valeu. 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 Oh, I, like no, no, I think after this video, I'm going to Yes, so can you repeat it again? How did you say that subscribe to my channel thing? So, so you can say, uh, inscrevam-se no meu canal. Inscrevam-se. Very good. Inscrevam-se. Inscrevam-se no meu canal. <laughs> Inscrevam-se. Ah, inscrevam-se. Perfect, very good. Inscrevam-se no meu canal. No canal. No <laughs> meu canal. <laughs> Perfect. So, muito obrigado, Gabriel. Muito obrigado. And, and 
Foi um grande prazer. <risos> so, thank you guys for watching. We're going to finish off here. And thank you so much for all of your tips, Gabriel, that they were helpful for you guys. And Foi final um prazer. words. Valeu. <risos> Valeu. <risos> Perfeito. All right. Tchau.